Today on Makers Muse, we're having a quick look and mini review of the Blocks Zero from Blocks Tech that's currently up on Indiegogo with maybe a day to go. Let's get started. Good day and welcome back to Makers Muse. My name is Angus and in this video I wanted to give you my brief overview and thoughts on the Blocks Zero. Now this isn't a full review like I would normally do on a 3D printer because their campaign does end in a two days, one day, depending on when this video goes up. So I just wanted to get my opinion out there to any of you who have been on the fence whether or not to back this machine that is currently on Indiegogo. Now they have, they have contacted me and said regardless of what funding it does get, it's still going ahead with industry partners, which is cool but I figure I'd give you my thoughts anyway on this neat little printer. So this is the Blox Zero from Bloxtech in Portugal and it is essentially a 3D printer distilled down to its most basic and low cost elements and actually it functions for the most part really, really well. Let's go over and have a look at its specs. So the build volume is 120 millimeters wide by 140 millimeters wide by 120 millimeters high in the Z axis. And it's not the biggest build volume I've ever come across, but it's certainly not the smallest. And you'll be able to get some decent prints out of it. So talking about prints, I haven't done too much printing on this. Actually, it's printing as we speak. And as I said before, I wanted to get this review out before the campaign on Indiegogo ended. But my thoughts on this machine, let's look at the build quality to start with. So it's made from laser cut plastic. I believe it's acrylic. It may be something similar. There is different types of acrylic, but it is laser cut and it's available as a kit or a assembled machine. Now, Blocks Tech sent me the assembled machine, which is awesome, but uh, I think Dustin, over, Dustin the Jackman over on his channel got sent the kit, and he had zero issues putting it, <laughs> putting it together. So it's assembled with T-slots, and T-slots are great for assembling laser cut components together, but they're also pretty finicky to assemble. Remember the very early MakerBot kits? Yeah, T-slots. So this uses T-slots, and T-slots in acrylic are kind of iffy. So when you're making a frame like this, over tightening them can definitely be a bad idea because your frame will crack. And I've noticed on this machine in some small areas, the T-slots have started to crack because they've been tightened a bit too much. It's very easy to do. You're tightening a metal component together against plastic and the, the internal sharp angles are a stress concentration point. They'll crack. So Keep that in mind if you get this as a kit, but otherwise, if you're careful, it does go together pretty well, and it's actually quite sturdy. So let's look at the mechanics of this thing. It uses a Bowden-style extruder, 3D printed, basic, it's got a little um, spring-loaded tensioner wheel, and a nice spool holder on the side, again, laser-cut acrylic, or plastic, and it holds a one kilo spool, no issue. Actually, there's room for an even bigger spool if I wanted to. And it feeds in, as I said, with a Bowden-style extruder, which actually kind of behaves like a direct-driven extruder because the, the tube is so short. You're not gonna get much issues with the traction problems and all that sort of thing. It seems to work pretty well. The electronics are pretty basic. It's running a ramp-style board, so that's Arduino with a ramp shield, and it's running full-size NEMA 17 motors, which is awesome. You're getting lots of torque in there. And to test the torque of this machine, I actually ramped it up to 100 millimeters per second printing VARS mode on this print. So this was going at 100 millimeters per second, which is ridiculously fast. It was absolutely fanging along and it did a phenomenally decent job. Now there was an extrusion issue here, as you can see, because the extruder wasn't actually keeping up. Again, uh, it was printing way too fast than it should be. It wasn't keeping up to the uh, movement, but the rest is great. And honestly, you could probably print normally at that speed. They do recommend a, a, a max speed, I think 80 millimeters per second, but I did ramp it up to 100 and it did manage to, manage to work like that with no skip steps. But something that's really important is it doesn't have a heated bed. You will not be printing ABS or any high temperature materials on this machine. You will only be printing PLA and maybe PETG because the bed is not heated. It is, however, removable. So my machine came with two of these frosted, again, I think they're acrylic sheets, and the parts stick almost flawlessly to them. Actually almost too well. This is a print I uh, had to kill for a reason I'll tell you in a minute, but basically it stuck just amazingly well. Yeah, I just broke it. it <laughs> so getting your layer height and your, your uh, bed level is critical when you first get the machine, otherwise you're gonna end up have the nozzle pushing into this. It is plastic, it will melt, and it will fuse to your PLA print. And they're not reversible, so you can't put them in the other way around. You have to put them in that way, which is annoying because the spacing for the leveling screws isn't symmetrical. 
That's something, that's something that could be tweaked pretty easily, I think. I'm quite a fan of how they've done the Z-axis with an actual proper idler pulley, which keeps the belt tension without hacky springs and that sort of thing. But how they've done the Y uh, rods, they're sort of pushed in place into the acrylic and it looks like they actually had holes to put in proper rod supports, but they haven't done it in this model. And that's not a great idea because laser cutting acrylic, you know, you just when you scale it up, you might send it to another machine that's slightly out of focus, maybe the mirrors are dirty in the laser cutter, and you'll get different tolerances. So one machine might be push fit, one machine might be loose, and the other you might put rods in and it might shatter the acrylic. So I reckon they should actually move to probably what they were gonna do before and put proper rod supports in. So as you can tell, this is printing right next to me and it's not that loud. For a machine with NEMA 17 motors, it's actually pretty quiet and you could probably make it even quieter by putting it on a shock absorbing base. One point of concern I will mention is the power supply. It's got a six amp 12 volt brick, which is here, and that's currently too hot to touch. So I'm not sure why, I mean, we're in Australia, we've got a higher voltage than America, for example, in our wall sockets, but it shouldn't really make much of a difference. I believe it's just drawing a bit too much current from it. It's not got enough safety overhead and that is pretty hot. So I would say it probably needs to go up to a 10 or 12 amp uh, brick, power supply brick, but it is working, it hasn't browned out. But again, probably a little bit too close to the mark to be running a machine like this. So depending what slots are left in their campaign, there is an early bird spot still left that I saw. The price of this machine is around $250 US. So that's going to be a bit of a deciding factor for a lot of people. It's certainly a lot more expensive than a cheap Chinese kit for what you're getting. You're still getting a small machine with no heated bed, but my experience with this machine has so far been pretty rock solid. There is one situation, which was actually with this print, where the Z height seemed to not change at the correct speed or maybe it, it missed a step, I'm not sure. And it digs, did start digging into its own print. I did investigate and I think one of the more hacky aspects of this printer is the lead screw on the Z-axis is attached to the motor with looks, what looks like a piece of sort of soft PVC uh, tubing. And uh, that's not that great. <laughs> and it does definitely wobble a little bit when it's moving up and down. Whether or not that makes artifacting, I can't really say. It does look like there may be a little bit of ribbing, but no, it's hard to tell. Nothing as major as on, as on some other machines I've tested. So do keep in mind the price point. It is around 330 Australian dollars as well, which is very high for a machine like this. Definitely check out, check out Dustin's build of it because he did build a kit and he had a great experience, which is not something you're likely to get out of a Chinese kit. Uh, you're not likely to get good instructions, but it is also still cheaper than a, another kit printer like the Prusa i3 Mark II. But again, that machine has a lot more features and a bigger build volume. So that's my mini review of the Blox Zero from Blox Tech. As I said, I usually take a lot longer to review printers, so this isn't fully in depth. I haven't printed loads of stuff, but I certainly have picked up some things about this machine that I like and some things that I don't like. If you enjoyed this video on Makers Muse, guys, and want to subscribe to see future 3D printing tips and tricks, I would very much appreciate it. And also a big thanks to my patrons for helping support the channel and making awesome content like this possible. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Into the latter half of the 20th century, a man has sent rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit.